a Thursday morning here on the link, looking good outside, and it is a special day here because it is National Nurses Appreciation Day. Every day should be National Nurses Appreciation Day. The, the fact that we're, we only have one official day on the calendar, I tell you what, we here at KUM, we're going to make, our, make it our mission to correct that and everything like that. So while we work on that, we have four amazing island nurses here, four amazing people, all women, all have dedicated their lives. And it's, you know, it's not just a job, it's truly a calling to making sure that people can live healthy lives and they can take care of those when we are at our most vulnerable. So first of all, ladies, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done. Um, not just over the last year, but you know, but really, you know, making this your life's work. So we have, of course, our friend and the Dean of the University of Guam School of Health, Dr. Margaret Hachor Hattori Uchima. And I think it's so funny how we have like all these nurses here. Everybody's looking down, filling out charts, you know, doing something and everything. And then they still give us some of their gracious time to uh, to do this interview with. So, uh, Doc, good to see you as always. Morning. Thanks a lot for having us. Uh, really well, a pleasure as always. It. Also a member of the UOG faculty and a former Navy nurse, uh, Natalie Capacci. Natalie, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having us. All right. Very, very nice to have you here. Also, Liz Santos is joining us and speaking about someone who has been rapidly filling out charts. We saw her as soon as she jumped in the Zoom room. She's been writing constantly, never stopped working, the hallmark of a true island nurse uh, and representing the Guam Nursing Association. Liz, happy day to you. Hi, happy day. Thank you for having me. All right, and Veronica Alave is here also and uh, representing UOG and the GNA as well. So, uh, Veronica, thank you much for joining us. Thank you also. It's a pleasure to have to be part of this. All right, well, it, you know, the pleasure is all ours that we can just, you know, take probably what are going to be a few fleeting moments to just, you know, uh, just thank all of you for what you what you've done. Um, and maybe if you can just unmute yourself and every, we'll just go around and ask maybe the first obvious question is, what has the last year meant for each of you professionally, personally, you know, going through everything that we've had to go through, you know, as a community, but then as, as nurses and everything, such unprecedented times. Uh, what has it taught you? That's a loaded question, Jason. Yeah. You hear from me and <laughs> we'll, we'll start with the easy one. I'll let, I'll let these ladies go first. <laughs> go ahead, Liz. Go ahead. Liz. So, um, with my perspective, I'm a nurse practitioner um, at UCSB. Um, I think that it's been a, a real whirlwind this past year, the pandemic, everything was unprecedented. There are so many changes in the way we had to uh, deal with our patients uh, regarding infection control, preventing the spread of the, the, the virus, and we didn't even know how to do it. So it was very stressful uh, emotionally. Um, on, on our nurses and on the families, um, most especially because we were so afraid to to even go out and see our families after work because we were afraid that maybe they might get um, the virus from us. I think it's taught us as a community to come together to help um, you know face the issue um, in our faces and try to collectively figure out a way for the community to be safe and provide effective Mm. Now, yeah, Liz, one, one of the most, the most, I, I mean, amazing and, and, you know, like I'm, I'm not saying that in, in an effusive way, but one of the things I remember most about like last year is we were talking to one nurse and she said, you know, I'm a, I'm a product of UOG's nursing, um, uh, nursing program and everything. So, you know, I was taught to intubate and, you know, how to, when somebody is having uh, trouble breathing and they're having resp severe respiratory issues, how to stick a tube down their throat. They, and she said, I think in my first couple of years, a GMH, I maybe did that twice. She goes, right in the height of COVID, I think I was doing that at least once a day, which was astonishing. Yeah, that's true. Um, mm. Yeah, so maybe maybe Natalie, from the perspective of, of someone who has, you know, you, you've been a nurse, um, you know, down in the Navy, and now you're someone who is helping to train these nurses and get them ready and send them out into the field and everything. Uh, how has this helped maybe to galvanize your mission? I think this past year has kind of taught us all that um, even if we have one plan, we have to remain flexible. We have to learn, um, use our resources, collaborate with other fields, collaborate with, you know, get the information as soon as it's available. Like Liz said, things were constantly changing, so we didn't really know, um, 
you know, what, what path the path was going forward or it wasn't really clear. So being, working with the community, working with other health professionals and collaborating with other teams, um, it was really impressive to see how the island came together and people really worked together for one goal. And that was, um, it was very hard, like Liz said, but it was also really reassuring to have that support and know that everyone was trying to reach the same goal of keeping everyone safe. Mm -hmm. I, I so, like that sentiment you shared, Natalie, and I'd, I'd like to ask uh, Veronica your thoughts on this is, um, you know, from the association's perspective and everything like that, what have you tried to do to make sure that your fellow nurses, you know, stay motivated and stay focused and say, you know, I know things are, things are really, really tough and this may be, you know, not what we were telling you when you were going through training and everything like that, but you know, this is what we signed up for. And this, this is why we were put here. This is what we have to do. So how do you, mm -hmm. how do you keep them going? Well, for, for me, um, my involvement uh, during this pandemic is really uh, to, to come out more and have uh, more healthcare people to work in there. Uh, I'm part of the CNA program of the UOG, uh, the nurses assistant program. And we try to, as much as possible, help out uh, the community by bringing more uh, healthcare workers in the field. Uh, also for making our student more uh, aware that community need us. In spite the student is still working on their BSN program, they can still help, even in a little thing, just volunteer. We, we are a model. As, as a nurses, whether you are new or an old nurses, you, you can be part of a model, for especially for this young generation, that every little thing you can contribute to the island. And I think that's that's the big thing in here in the island is we're working together and as much as possible. Uh, you know, we try to collaborate with each other. We, look, we try to connect to each other. And that's the important things, is especially on this pandemic time. And now, now, Margaret, I'd like to come back to you because, you know, you have always been someone as long as we've had the, the great privilege of being able to talk to you about your philosophy um, is you believe in leading from the top and, you, you know, you, you lead by example. And, you know, Sabrina even did a story with you where you said that even though, you know, you're doing all the administrative stuff of running the School of Health and, you know, um, you're getting people ready and giving presentations and doing all the budgeting and, you know, all of that stuff, you still find time in your day to hustle over to the, the field house and, yourself administer vaccines when, when the clinic first set up and you even you even shared that you know your daughter um is a nursing student and she can't wait to get out in the field and say you know my people need me yeah jason well so so my daughter's a psychology student but she yeah she was volunteering at the the um the field house and she her degree is going to be in community psychology so you know she wants to be out there and she had been helping us with the homeless uh count and other homeless events but uh, in terms of nursing, I think what, what these ladies said, you know, really is right on point. And one thing that a lot of the island wasn't aware of, especially if we're reflecting on a year ago, is that, yeah, there was a lot of fear. But very early on when the state of emergency was called and, you know, a lot of us remember that day, the nurse leaders were called together at public health and, you know, they said, OK, the governor's initially uh, asked all of you to help uh, galvanize the workforce, and then, like Ms. Vicky said, figure out how we can add to the to the existing, you know, strained workforce. Um, but a lot of people don't know that behind the scenes, you know, our our nurses were calling each other. You know, uh, Natalie was able to work at GMH for a short time in the ER. Uh, she gained a lot of friendships there. Um, and at one point, we didn't have enough faculty to do community health. And if we don't do community health, our students can't graduate. And so um, at that point, I think I was one of the few that could go in the in the field and I used to teach community health. Um, and so Natalie volunteered to help in the community. And I think, you know, I'm so blessed to have a great faculty, but we all we all had to be flexible. Uh, our plans went out the window. Someone that's a pediatric nurse practitioner like Natalie we didn't hire her to teach community health, but of course she has the skills to do it. And, you know, I went out there with her in the community and I think she, one thing I, I, I appreciate about the nurses on Guam is that the public health nurses, the GMH nurses, uh, the DOE nurses, everybody embraced each other. You know, they, they knew that here we are, we don't, we didn't have to take the students and go out and help with the swabbing. You know, we were scared, the students were scared, but we knew we have to help the island. These are our people, these are our families. 
And so, you know, it was really through other other nurses in the community at GMH, everywhere, GRMC, you know, calling each other and saying, hey, you know, we need help. Can your students help with this? Or can your faculty help with that? Uh, we called GNA many times, or, you know, I posted on Facebook. But I think one thing that I have to say for the nurses of, on Guam is that I learned we have to ask for help. You know, two years ago, mm-hmm. maybe I would never ask for help. Mm-hmm. But we slowly learned before the pandemic, we need to ask each other for help. But during the pandemic, I saw such a high level of professionalism among all our nursing brothers and sisters. And, and we grew to feel like we're family. You know, we spend so much of our day helping other people. And we have to, to finally just say, hey, you're my family, you know, and, and you're as important to me as my own my my own children, right? And so, you know, just shout out to the nurses. Um, but yeah, I have to be out there because every nurse feels that if we can contribute in any way to this pandemic and ending this right. pandemic, that it's our moral obligation to do so, whether it's in our right. job description. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think we all know that we wouldn't have survived through this pandemic or would be as far as uh, we are right now without our our nurses here on island. But I did want to ask, though, have you seen um, a peak in interest for people uh, wanting to enroll or people wanting to be nurses? That That's always, uh, I mean, we've always had an interest in nursing mm-hmm. and I think nationwide of course, the interest in nursing and medicine um, yeah. has, has grown. On Guam, it's always been a huge interest. Our problem is resources in terms of classroom mm. space, lab space. You know, to, to grow a nurse, you need you need a lot of nurses that are in the field that will precept or, or you know, train these nurses alongside them. So it, it, it's a, a big issue. But yes, great, great interest. And that will continue. Also with social work and public health. You know, we need a lot yeah. of people in public health. Mm. I think the pandemic has taught us that our years of lack of attention to public health uh, has led to our difficulty in mobilizing quickly. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a whole area of professionals that that we really need to grow also. Yeah. So uh, what, what's planned for uh, today? And I think it's also, isn't it Nurses Month? Like the whole month is dedicated to celebrating um, our nurses. I think I saw something on... Um, Liz, I think I saw something on uh, the GNA uh, social media. Yes. Um, So for Nurses Month on Guam, we're very lucky because um, in the States, they they celebrate for a week. But here on Guam, we're spoiled and nurses celebrate the whole month of May. So um, I'd like to get into the whole Nurses Month festivities, if that's okay. Yes, please. So um, for Nurses Month, we actually kicked off with our proclamation signing on April 30th. Um, We had our nurses blessing just this past Sunday. And what we have lined up uh, for the rest of the month is if you go on our social media, um, check us out at Instagram, Guam Nurses Association, and on Facebook, we invite the community, not just nurses, but the whole community to um, join our challenges. We are having some fun virtual activities and there's going to be some raffle prizes involved. Um, That's the whole month. And we are focusing on our mental health and our physical health, because we all know that in order for us to take care of our community or our family, we need to make sure we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, Then we also have many virtual conferences. This year, it's very important for all of our nurses to attend. Um, We offer free continuing education units. And this is the year that our nurses are renewing our licenses. So that will be on May 15th and May 22 from 1 to 3 p.m. Our our topics will be about, um, we have a speaker from the Philippines talking to us about how the nurses um, experienced the pandemic. So they're going to be sharing that with us. Um, GBN will be talking also about the pandemic. We also have um, a psychologist talking to us about um, mental health and just making sure that we keep that as a priority. Uh, We also have um, uh, an award ceremony. So this year is really big. 
Uh, yeah. Every year, uh, the Guam Nurses Association uh, recognizes our nurses and um, awards. Uh, this year is going to be the year of the nurse. And Dr. Margaret was actually our recipient for 2019. So this year, <laughs> so I do want to recognize Dr. Margaret for that. So this hey. year, um, it <laughs> yes. Um, May 29th, Saturday, that's going to be at 1030. We invite everybody, the whole community to tune in at the governor's um, FB live to attend for the nurse of the year. And lastly, we're very excited. This is our first annual ever virtual 5k. So I don't have the dates uh, just yet because we're ironing everything out. Um, but we plan for it to happen about mid May um, to June. So that encompasses all of our um, nurses month festivities and activities. Right. You you mentioned nurses nurse of the year. That's got to be hard to decide, right? So how do you determine who is nurse of the year? Are there like finalists or people nominate them? Yes, yes. So we have encouraged our nurses to choose um, candidates, and there is a packet that they sign. Uh, we 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 have judges who review our packets and you know um, no one knows who's going to win until the day of our our award ceremony so this is really really big uh, we are always proud of our nurses and so we can't wait to see who's going to be our winner for this year mm -hmm. I how think many should, i, I guess, think it should um, be like you know just what, like time magazine does right like when time picks like the person of the year they should just say the nurse of the year is everybody if you wear scrubs and crocs <laughs> you are you are the nurse of the year Every single one of you deserves deserves to be recognized. You're right. Everyone should be recognized. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, How many uh, uh, do you have? The names of the the nominees. I don't have the names of the nominees, but I believe we have about five to six nominees this year. Uh, will you be uh, releasing the names? No, we usually don't release the names. Oh, okay. we don't usually okay. release it until the day of the the ceremony. And then yes. we'll release all the nominees and the, the winner. Okay. Okay. But Sabrina, I agree with you. I just want to add because because some of us nominated people. <laughs> uh, I, I just really feel that this year in particular, every nominee is a winner. And you're right, Jason. Every nurse, you know, is, is a winner. Um, and I just want to point out because, you know, we talk about the celebrations, right? And I just want to acknowledge that, that many of us, Sometimes nurses, hearing it's nurses month, and again, this is year of the nurse, same as last year. Some of us, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, right? We kind of feel like the universe is mocking us as a profession because there's a it's year of the nurse and the midwife last year and there's a pandemic, right? So, and then year nurses month, you know, some of us were a little, I personally was a little depressed and not really excited about it because it just kind of hammers home, you know, the things that we've lost. But I appreciate GNA because, you know, Suzanne and, and Liz are texting yeah. me saying, okay, here's our celebrations. And they made these really cool flyers and they've got great, uh, great uh, raffle prizes and great events. And of course, nurse of the year. So, you know, just for those nurses out there that may be kind of stressed or depressed, you know, I just want to reach out to you and say, you know, you, you guys are all great. You've done so much. Hang in there. You know, we've got each other. Uh, but it is important to acknowledge, you know, our vocation and, and how much uh, we appreciate all of the nurses. So, you know, I want to thank GNA and everybody that's tried, and you guys, everyone that's tried to lift us up, uh, especially in our down moments. But thank you guys. Well, you're not, you're not only part of, you know, of the, the distinct community of nurses, but especially like on Guam. And, you know, it, I mean, it's been said so many times and, you know, we'll never tire of, of saying it too, is, you know, Guam nurses have like a certain a certain grit and a certain attitude and you know their compassion is is second to none you know we we, we had some uh, messages from the visiting nurses who came over on that contract um last year and we're working mm -hmm. at gmh and we shared them with lillian posadas and they were all saying you know they, they went on and on and they were like you know guam nurses they took the time you know even if there were a little bit of like resource shortages they never complained they did the job until it was done and it, it was absolutely amazing and i remember you know my father was in the hospital uh, several times. And even though he saw many, many different nurses, I don't know if this is like something that like Natalie and, uh, and Veronica and, and Margaret, you tell nursing students to say it at GMH, but they all kind of said something to the degree of they're like, you know what, I'm not going to let you quit on me because I'm not going to quit on you. And that is how I'm going to get you better. 
Yeah. I don't think we teach that, but I think it's inherent with nursing <laughs> that you feel that way about patients. Yeah, well, we thank you, you guys, for everything, you know, for everything you guys are doing. And, you know, on behalf of all of us at KUAM, we appreciate you. And like Jason said, it should be Nurses Day every day. We're going to make that happen. Can I just say something that uh, we just, on behalf of the GNA, we're also extending this celebration, not only for the registered nurses, but for all the nurses, especially even the nurses aide. You know our our nurse practitioner, nurses aide, anything in the field uh, in the field of healthcare, uh, especially our nurses aide. They are actually our backbones. You know they're very yeah. important, especially in the hospital. It, it's just that you know you said nurses day, so we just want to extend to everyone nurses as long as there's a nurse you know, yeah. in in that title in there that this is actually for everyone's celebration, and we actually thankful to everyone and thank you for recognizing. Yeah. And Jason, just a last shout out to Natalie because Natalie's uh, leaving us this year. She doesn't want me to say it, but what I think is important oh. is that our our Navy nurses, you know, Natalie's a former Navy nurse, but she was able to get some uh, military dependents to volunteer and assist us. And so I just want to shout out to Natalie because, you know, you've done so much for the community. Thank you, Natalie. That, that's amazing. Oh. Thanks, Natalie. And can, can, well, can we can we share because you you mentioned this and everything. Nursing nursing is also in your family. Oh yeah, my husband is also a nurse. So it's yeah, my mother's a nurse and my mother in law's a nurse. So there's a lot of nurses in my family. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, wow. we would we would like to extend our you know our sincere thanks and seduce Masi to you know your husband, your mother, your mother in law, like all of you for the amazing job that you do you've all done. I mean, we're certainly better because of it. Yeah, and keep us posted on uh, nurses of, of the year and the and the finalists. Yeah, Absolutely. right on. Thank you, ladies. Thank, so thank you, you very much. Thank happy happy National Nursing Day. Take care. Happy Nursing Month. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys. There you Bye. go. Bye. Bye. Viva the nursing! Viva nursing! Viva the nursing! Viva! Viva the nursing! There you go. No, man, we, we, got, we got to get some music. We need some Now it's food. official. Yeah. <laughs> but healthy food. Next year it'll be live. We'll right be in on. person. There you go. There you go. No, there Mar you Margaret, go. Margaret we're going to get some snacks, but healthy snacks. Goals. Yeah, yep. brown yep. rice. Definitely. Brown rice. Yep. We'll make you exercise. Well, we'll I mean, if, if we all ate healthy, you guys you would go. be you guys would be out of a job, though, Margaret. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys. Bye. All right. Uh, 901. Good morning. Uh, we take a quick break.